Hello, and welcome to another PC game review. With Bayonetta 2 just on the horizon, and with the inclusion of the first Bayonetta, which I've missed out on, I figured it would be the perfect time to look into the other works of Platinum Games to get an idea of what to expect. The Wonderful 101 was good, but it's clear it has a different playstyle than Bayonetta 2. So what better game to prepare myself than one of their most popular offerings, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance released on PC much later than its console brethren, just arriving in January of 2014, almost an entire year later. Nonetheless, this collaboration between Platinum Games and Kojima Productions is a sight to behold. The core of this game is slicing things up. Whether you're quickly slashing at an enemy to get his health down, or going into blade mode to cut off limbs and hack away at the right spot to get electrolytes. The sword combat in this game is surprisingly simple, yet deep enough to reward mastery. However, some enemies do become a little too easy once the combat system is mastered. The game will compensate for this by throwing higher numbers of enemies at you, resulting in less than ideal combat situations. Additionally, it's in these situations that some issues clearly arise. The camera is poorly handled around walls or in more enclosed areas, hindering your ability to parry. The issue here is that parrying is required to do well in combat, so be prepared to take some hits to the face through no fault of your own. From there, two even weaker elements are the infrequent attempts at platforming and the option for stealth. It's fortunate that there is very little platforming because what is there is rather wonky, even considering the use of Ninja Run, which roughly translates to auto-platforming. And the stealth options? They're there, but hardly in the vein of the Metal Gear series, and honestly, only save time, as brute force is often a lot more fun. Add to this the sub-weapons you can use, and brute force becomes your answer almost automatically. In the end, the game shines where it was focused on the most, combat. Be prepared to look totally awesome when you figure out just how and when to time your attacks and blade mode. What was once an enemy requiring considerable effort will soon become a walking piece of meat you'll quickly slice through. Most important to let viewers know now is that Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is not a long game. Do not expect main entry Metal Gear series length. It lasted me just barely over four hours of total playtime. While there are VR missions and equipment upgrades, this game is definitely short on the content side. Fortunately, what is delivered is done so without too much extraneous fat. The story may be a bit cheesy, but it moves along at a brisk pace and is intended to minimize the amount of confusing complexity regular Metal Gear games are known for. Just know going into this game that it will be over pretty quickly. Thankfully, it's one hell of a ride, regardless of how little there is to it. The story, while short, is filled with plenty of dialogue and storytelling. The issue here is that the character development feels a little forced, most likely partially due to the short nature of the game. Not only that, some cheesy acting and cheesy story elements sometimes hamper the message the game is trying to get across about characters. On to graphics options. Here are the graphics options for PC users. If you have any gaming PC considered modern, you can probably turn most of these things to the maximum. The graphics are good, but not great, and it clearly feels like an up upscaled console game, of which it basically is. It also has some glitches for some configurations, requiring outside fixes for higher resolutions and frame rates over HDMI, something I personally had to face. Then there's the music, and while the music itself isn't bad on its own, it can sometimes be overbearing. The game contains all kinds of awesome Platinum Games craziness, but trying to match that with music just becomes too much at times. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance successfully contains the kind of crazy that Platinum Games is becoming known for and wraps it in a rather succinct package. While far from perfect, the game does stand to be a worthy purchase, even on PC, if you are into some seriously crazy swordsmanship. The use of blade mode is really the standout and is executed near perfectly, and its mastery develops a deep understanding of the combat system that is hard to match by any other action game of this type. Unfortunately, the game is marred by several issues in all other key areas outside of the combat. Despite that, it's worth playing just for the crazy, high-octane combat, and that's saying a lot. I give Metal Gear Rising Revengeance an 8 out of 10. I'm really excited for Bayonetta 2, and with Nintendo's influence may stand to be the most successful and biggest game Platinum Games ever makes, even if it's coming out to a very small install base. See you on my next PC game review.